Owens, who hasn't played in a game since 2010, went on the Rich Eisen Show, shout out to Rich, and said that he has had his people call the Cowboys to see if they were interested in Owens returning to the team. I'm not sure what the, the situation is. I think there are, um, you know, my name may have come up in discussion as far as bringing me in. But again, a lot of people are going to factor in my age. Um, as far as why I can't play. Um, we all know what happened when I was there, and, and, and there were some things said um, where it kind of may have fractured, you know, the, the relationship with, between myself and Witten and Romo. Um, and again, you know, uh, time has passed, and hopefully, you know, they know that I've moved on beyond that, and maybe hopefully they have. Um, but for me, you know, it's all about giving, you know, myself an opportunity, and that's all I ever really wanted. Stephen A., 41-year-old Terrell Owens, what's your take? If you're looking at his birth certificate, it's absolutely ridiculous that he should be in the NFL. If you know T.O., if you see what type of shape he keeps himself in, the way he takes care of himself, his body, et cetera, et cetera, um, I definitely think you should give him a look. I definitely think you should give him an opportunity, a chance. If you're the Dallas Cowboys, one would argue that you're in the midst of a Super Bowl run. You simply can't take that risk because it's not like Dez is not coming back this season. Dez is expected to be back. So if you're asking yourself the questions, well, what would we do with T.O. then? Of course, it makes sense not to bring him on board. If Dez is not going to come back, then again, you ask yourself, why not give him a chance? So it sounds like it's all over the place because it's so conditional when you look at T.O. as to what situation he should be invited into in terms of being given a chance to really show up. Here's my thing, Skip. I have a very, very sympathetic side towards Terrell Owens. Here is why. <clears throat> He's made a lot of mistakes. Um, folks, you called them, you know, Team, <laughs> team obliterator. Team obliterator yeah. and, you know, terrible Owens at times. No, and, I didn't but, say that. You didn't say that no. one? That wasn't you? No. Yeah, but I know you said team obliterator. That's your coin. I, no I use Neo occasionally instead of Tio. That's right. Yeah. For me, there's no disputing what kind of effect he's had on locker rooms. But I've always been opposed to how premature his career ended. This guy... 15,934 yards, 153 touchdowns in his career, 1,078 receptions. When he retired, when he left the game, rather, he was second all-time to Jerry Rice in those categories. When you talk about three of the most elite receivers in NFL history, there's usually a discussion involving him, Randy Moss, and Jerry Rice. And I just look at it from the standpoint that Regardless of the mistakes that he made, I just look at those who have been given other chances in the NFL. And I know this may not have anything to do with T.O. per se, but my God, when we see what has transpired over the last several years and guys who have been given other opportunities just to resurrect their career or to go out the way their numbers and their stature says they deserve to go out, I am just of the mindset that I would love to see him back in the game, just getting the chance. I didn't realize the last time he played was in 2010 yep. in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. 11, you know, I, I mean, I'm just looking at it right now. 72 receptions, 983 yards. And then, you know, with Seattle, he was in training camp and ultimately got let go. I don't think that was because he dropped a couple of passes because I saw him catch a couple of good ones, too. I think that was primarily a product of the fact that it was a relatively young team with Russell Wilson and those boys and you couldn't risk having T.O. with a young quarterback. I think that's what Pete Carroll was thinking. That's probably thinking. true. But I just, I'm just of the mindset that it would really, really be nice. <clears throat> the circumstances have to be ideal and I understand that. But it would really be nice for him to depart from the game on a higher note than he departed from. Because I think he deserves more than that. I'm going to concede one point to you and only one point. I have no doubt that Terrell is in phenomenal condition right now. I have no doubt that if you threw him into Sunday's game against the Falcons at Jerry World, I, I think he could produce a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. He could help. I have no doubt about that. The reason I can't abide your word nice is because I still haven't quite gotten over what he did to this football team 
at the end in 2009. The reason I called him Team Obliterator and the reason I've told you repeatedly I don't want to see him in the Hall of Fame is because he didn't tear apart one or two teams, three teams, including the third team, the Dallas Cowboys. Again, I'm a lifelong Cowboy fan. For a while, I was a big T.O. fan when I was in San Francisco and he was playing for the 49ers. He's taken a lot of shots at me lately, and he's welcome to do that lately? because... Yeah, he has. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, I'm an idiot now, but that's okay. He's called me an idiot a few times. But, but I deserve that because I've taken shots, so he can take his, and I'm fine with that. This isn't personal on that account, but it is personal on this account. Do you remember how badly it ended with these Dallas Cowboys of Tony Romo and Jason Witten? Do you remember that when Terrell was released in March after 2009? Eight, that, I believe. After... It says here eight. His last season was 2008 when he eight. had 1,052 yards. That okay, March. But, but in, in right. oh, not that, gotcha. that March. Gotcha. Yeah. He, March 2009. Yeah, he said that, he was quoted as saying that Tony Romo definitely had a hand in his release, meaning he wanted him out. Repeatedly, Terrell dropped hints to the media about how Romo favored Jason Witten too much to a fault. Do you remember that? Yes. And he had a shouting match with Todd Haley, who was then the remember the he was an assistant coach in Dallas at that point mm -hmm. and they got into it and that led to Jason Witten and Terrell I was told getting face to face into it and having to be separated before a practice one day in Dallas it got that bad so given all that backdrop given the fact that a very talented Dallas team crumbled at the end of that year losing three of its last four and you remember what happened at Philadelphia in the final regular season game that year as they missed the playoffs mm -hmm. they lost 44 to 7 because they had been torn apart internally I think foremost by one T.O. he split that locker room the way he split locker rooms I thought in San Francisco and Philadelphia mm -hmm. my point is there was so much bad blood that to have the audacity to think that you could make a call to Jerry Jones and say, hey, remember me, I'm available, is mind-blowing to me. That you would want to go back with that quarterback and that tight end, who, by the way, is still pretty good. I would, I would have to He's say Jason good. Witten is pretty good. Mm -hmm. And obviously, they are best friends. They've been best friends from the start. So it's hard to break that apart. It, but, but does Tony Romo favor Jason Witten? Oh, maybe positively he favors him. I mean, it's, it's not a bad thing to throw him the ball every once in a while, especially in the last play of the game mm -hmm. against your New York Giants mm -hmm. on opening Sunday night. Mm -hmm. So my point is, he, Jerry Jones loved Terrell. He brought him there. It was Jerry's choice, not Bill Parcell's choice. It was Jerry's, and he's got a soft spot just the way you have for Terrell. And I'm sure in his heart of hearts, if he could make it happen, it would be a great thing to have him back in the fold. But I don't think Tony Romo and Jason Witten would be real happy about it. So that's all that would matter to me at this point. Well, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that Terrell Owens should be brought back in spite of them. I'm saying that if they were willing to forgive and forget or rather forgive and move on, does the man deserve a chance? I th and I'm not trying to really get into it too heavily. I have a soft spot for anybody that produced on the level that Terrell Owens produced and is ostracized from the game. I remember having a soft spot for Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who's the greatest big man ever and a six-time NBA champion. And people thought that he was difficult to have around as a yeah, coach. Yeah, but did he tear, tear apart no, no, the I'm Lakers? Just, I'm just saying some of the things that are yeah. said about him. No, I, I, I I'm just making the point that I have been on, on record saying I don't care about that. When you have somebody that contributes as much to the game as they have, you have to find a place for them. And not even, you know, with Terrell, Terrell Owens, you may not have to find a place for him as at age 41 as a player. But people act like this dude should be, you know, just ostracized from the game of football forever. Terrell Owens made a lot of mistakes. But you have a lot of people in those locker rooms who sided with him for a reason. Here's the biggest problem with Terrell Owens. He never lied. He told the truth. He just didn't know how to keep his mouth shut and get along for the better of the team. When he felt emotional about something, he was going to express himself. So again... He told the truth as he viewed it, well, as, as he, he saw it. Well, well as he viewed it. But yeah. I never heard anybody say he's lying. I've heard people saying there's more to it than his emotions will allow him to acknowledge. But I never said anybody... I never once heard anybody say that he was lying. What they got on him about is that he would say stuff 
that mm -hmm. obviously was in violation of quote unquote the code. But Terrell Owens didn't reveal anything about other people's business. He revealed stuff about his own, what problems he was going through with somebody. I don't think in today's day when we see some of the issues, when some of the people that are brought back into the league, that's a reason for this guy to be ostracized. Dallas is not the right situation in all likelihood for him, but I think he should get a chance to contribute to the NFL in some capacity considering his greatness throughout the years. And as far as we know, he has not been brought in by Dallas, just made the call his representatives to the mm -hmm. Cowboys organization. Kim Chancellor is back with his organization, though returning to the Legion of Boom. Jerome Bettis is in the house. He'll join the desk to offer his thoughts. This big addition back with the Hawks. That's next.